Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well and happy new year. I hope your new year has got off to a good start. I'm filming in my little studio today because I wanted to make a blouse of you guys. Um, this year I'm going to try and sew a lot more for myself, um, just for the fun of it and hopefully get a good little wardrobe full of clothes that I have made. It's also hopefully going to be a way of getting through all of my fabric. Well, not all of it, but I have a very large amount of fabric stashed away. And it would be nice to actually get it out and do something with the fabric. So this is my little January pile of fabric to work on. Um, one is for the blouse that we're gonna make in this video. And I'm just obsessed with this fabric. It's so, so beautiful. Um, I tried to find it online, but I can't seem to find the print anywhere online but I bought it in a quilting fabric shop. And then the second thing which I won't be making in this video is a little knitted, well, quite a big knitted square that I found in a charity shop. And I thought I would try and turn it into a dog coat. I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that yet. So I've already had a go at making the blouse in a mock-up version. So I'm going to finish the alterations to that and then I'm gonna go make myself some lunch. So this is the sort of style I'm going for. I went for a cowl neckline and usually it's not very common to use a cowl neckline on cotton fabric because it doesn't necessarily drape as well but I quite like the look of it. And then I've gone for a puffed leg of mutton sleeve and I need to add a little bit more length to it in the pattern um, so that when I tuck it into trousers it doesn't come out as easily. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to do those and then head downstairs. Since we're coming down, oh no, let's find some common ground. Take me to the point, oh, oh, oh. I've finished the pattern cutting and now I'm going to have some lunch and have a clear mind before I go back and cut out the fabric because you don't want to make any mistakes on that bit. So this part of the video is very kindly sponsored by HelloFresh and I'm going to make a quick little lunch with you guys and show you what I'm making. It was really nice to come home from Christmas, New Year and all the craziness and not have to go out and do a food shop and we had all of our ingredients delivered straight to our doorstep. The box arrived today and I opened it up earlier and put the fridge stuff in the fridge and it's all labelled really clearly so you know exactly what needs to go in the fridge and which items go with which meal. I have three different recipes to choose from and I'm going to do the quick 20 minute one for lunch because I want to get back to my pattern cutting and try and finish this blouse in one day. <laughs> so for today's lunch, I am making speedy creamy chorizo and sweet corn pasta, which looks very yummy. So the recipe cards have a step-by-step -step on the back. So you just use the ingredients they've given you and you don't have to waste any food. And it's also great for really fancy things like this where you need like teriyaki sauce and you might not use teriyaki sauce for God knows how long. So yeah, let's get making my lunch. I'm very excited about this. And voila, here's my lunch. This smells so good. I hardly took any time at all. Yum. So there we go, now I have my meals planned for the rest of the week, which is so nice, I don't have to go out to the shops or get anything. I have got a discount code that you guys can use and it will get you 60% off your first box and then 25% off the next eight boxes that you purchase. Um, so I'll put that code on the screen now and as always I'll leave all the information linked down below. But now I'm going to go enjoy my bowl of pasta and then I'm going to head back up to the studio. Stuck in the night. I thought I'd just share a little bit about the shape of the pattern with you in case any of you are interested in drafting your own patterns 
like I do. Um, I get a lot of questions about if I sell my patterns. Um, I don't at the moment, but I would love to work on that this year. If anyone knows anyone that's a real whiz with digitalizing patterns, that's the bit that I struggle with. <laughs> so the bodice piece looks very strange because it's got that cowl neckline. The top is basically a rectangle um, and then you have your shoulder seam here and then that goes into your armhole and then down to the side. So eventually when you sew it, this bit all sort of crunches up into the middle and goes onto the arm like that. <laughs> so it looks very strange but it does work. And then this is what the back piece looks like. Um, I'm having a centre back seam this time. I don't usually do this but I thought I'd try it out um, because it might make people's lives easier if you want to recreate it if I eventually digitalise it. And it's got a little dart down the back to add some shaping. That's the only dart I've put in this blouse, one on each side of the back. And then you've got what are called facings. So I've got the front facing here and the back facing. And these just make your life super easy, having facings. Um, you can obviously finish off necklines with bias trim or overlocking and folding it under. But I find using a facing is my preferred method. I think it looks really nice, it adds a good quality to the blouse. So these will both attach at the shoulder and you will sort of sew that as one piece and then it goes, sits almost exactly the same, well exactly the same as the shape as the front and the back um, but it just sits inside. And then finally I have the sleeve. So again this looks a bit strange to the usual sleeve pattern um, but this is the shape I've gone for, I've really accentuated the top part of the shoulder and that gives you all the volume and then you gather all of that top part so that it shrinks down into the armhole nicely and you have a nice gathered sleeve. I love the shape of a leg of mutton sleeve because it's really wearable. Um, you don't have loads of fabric that's going to get crushed if you're going to wear like a cardigan on top of it which I do a lot of the time because I get very cold. And then finally I do have some trims that I might use on the sleeves um, just around the cuff areas. I have this gorgeous dark blue velvet ribbon and I might use that along the cuffs just to add a bit of interest. I think that will instantly add something else to the blouse and make it look a little bit more interesting. So there we go, that's a look at the pattern. And now I'm gonna go and cut it all out in my gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. <laughs> facings and I'm going to take the pins out and I've got to join the back facing together before that becomes one piece and then I will attach it to the top and in general I use a one centimeter seam allowance. So now we have a back facing and we can stitch that the front. Before I overlock those, I'm going to show you how I transfer where I put the darts. So I've got little notches for the darts and then I just simply put a pin in through them. And then I will mark the little cross and I'm actually going to overlock the centre back before I stitch it together because I want to press it open. The facing is done and looking very nice. I overlocked around the edge that will sit inside the blouse. So this edge would have been a raw edge otherwise and everything else is nice and neat. So now I'm gonna work on the back and the first thing I'm gonna do is stitch the two back pieces together 
facing each other. Now I need to find the darts and I can see the little marks I made with my pen and the pencil. And so I just pinch them, hold them up like that and set the needle at my first point. And I see where the middle point is. And then I sort of do it by eye, which is not very helpful. But um, let's see how this goes. And then there's one dart in there, like so. And we'll just do the same on the other side. And then I just open it out and check that the darts look like they start and end in the same sort of position, which it looks like they do. Okay, now I've got the front panel. And before I attach it to the back, I need to add some gathering stitches along the shoulder. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to turn my stitch length up to four, backtrack and do a parallel row of stitches along here. I did make some little notches where I want the gathering to sit on the shoulder and then once I have it attached to the back I'll be able to see how much I need to loosen this by. So now we can pin the front shoulders to the back shoulders. So I don't usually pin things into place before I sew but I will with these because it needs to be a bit more accurate. So there we go, that's one shoulder attached with the little gathers in there. I find to get really nice gathers it's also good to pull on the fabric but also hold it at the top and then they won't be all bunched up and horrible. So now we have the front and back attached and at this point before we add the facing we need to decide what sort of fastening we want at the neck at the back. And I've just thought that I might use some of this ribbon and create a really nice little bow that sits at the back, a ribbon bow, and then I could match the back of that and tie it in with the sleeves and have it sort of around the cuff. Measure how much I think I would want, quite generous amount I think to start with, and I can always trim it. And then I'll need to stitch in place before I stitch on the facing. So I've got the one centimetre seam allowance, so I need to account for that. And then I will pop it just below that. Now I can take my facing and just sit it on top, good size together. And I can just stitch all around the opening. Facing is attached at the front and the back. And now I'm just going to stitch together the side seams and then we can put it on the mannequin and I can show you how far we've got. So this is as far as we've got so far and you can see how much the gathers in the shoulder and the way the neckline was like a big rectangle has finally sort of all crushed in on itself to create this pretty cowl neckline here. So happy with the way it looks. And at the back there's a little velvet bow which is looking so cute and I'll decide the length once I've finished everything. Everything seems to be sitting nicely at the moment. The darts are good. Um, so now we can move on to the sleeves. Okay moving on to the sleeve I have a few different ideas for the trim. I might stitch on the velvet ribbon again as a sort of make it look as though there's a cuff on the sleeve um, and I could also put lace underneath that that could look quite cute but I don't know if it really needs the white for decisions like this I usually just take a picture and then it's usually pretty obvious to me which one looks better I think plain <laughs> I'm going to pin that into place and I'm going to check it's the same height but I'll just do one pin to start with. Now I've got to go and stitch that really carefully along each line. The 
velvet ribbon has been stitched on and I've given it a good press from the back and now I need to go and add the gathering running stitch all across the top of the sleeve. We have two finished sleeves all ready to go on. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. Let's get this pinned on. I have one notch that sits at the same point on the top shoulder seam here. So that will match to that and then this matches to the underarm. So I'm going to pop those on now. So nearly finished. Sleeves are on and I just went and overlocked them. And now all that's left to do is hem the cuffs and the bottom of the blouse. So to hem things I literally just fold them over once and again and I pull it quite tight. So there we have the finished blouse. I love how this has turned out. I really love a cowl neckline like this and I feel like you don't often find tops like this so I wanted a real vintage feel to the top as always um, I love how the puff sleeves turned out and I'm so glad I added this little velvet detail around the cuffs because I really think it just makes it look as though it could have been a vintage piece I hope you guys are all having a great start to your new year and I will see you in my next video. Bye!